This is a little bit of a tricky lesson, but we do it for two reasons. The first is that we do it to, you know, just like learn stuff and get smarter. And the other reason is that it's going to help us with the next lesson 3.7. So let's look at what this lesson is about. What it's about is a family of functions. And just like a family of people, they have something in common. The most basic function in a family is called the parent function. And then for non-constant linear functions, it's f of x equals x, which we also know as just y equals x. That would be a line with a slope of 1 going through the origin. Very nice and basic. Everything else, every other line, is a transformation of that parent function. And in the end of your red 7th Accelerated book, you learned about transformations a little. A transformation changes size, shape, position, or orientation. So size, shape, position, and orientation is another way of describing the way something is pointing. The first transformation we look at is what's called a translation. A transformation slides something across the grid so it could move horizontally or vertically, but it doesn't change any of the other characteristics of it. It's just sliding on the grid. And you can see in the picture below, from the parent function or here, this black line, it either shifted to the left or to the right, or it shifted up or down. So let's look at what these shifts might look like in an equation or in a function. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, create this graph, f of x equals 2x minus 1. Um, and then we have to do these transformations to it. What I want you to do is pause the video, and on each grid, I want you to graph f of x equals 2x minus 1. Now, it's written in slope-intercept form, so I would encourage you to uh, do the m, which is 2, and the b, which is negative 1, and use that information to graph the function, and then press play when you have it on both grids. If your graphs were wrong, please pause and fix them. What I do want to point out is that now that we're talking about function notation, because we have f and g and t, I can actually just write f of x, and I don't have to write the super long equation that represents this line, because there's only one f graph. And that's something nice about function notation. You can do that sort of, sort of abbreviation as long as the letters are different. All right, now what we're going to do with this graph or with this function is we're going to take our output. Rem remember, f of x is another way of saying y. So we're going to take our y values and add 3 to them. So our output, our y values, are going to increase by 3. So if this is the first point, if I increase the y value by 3, it's going to go up 3, and that's going to be where the new dot is. So let's put a dot over in that new spot. And then the same thing happens for the other one. If I have this dot and I want to increase the output by 3, it's just going to go up 3 to this spot right here. So let me put a dot right there. And obviously it would then just keep going. So let's make that line. The question then says, describe the transformation. Now, this graph might look like it shifted to the left a little, but mathematically what happened is it shifted up three units. Now let's go look at the other one. For this one, if you notice, the 3 is now inside the parentheses. And when we talked about function notation, we said the input is inside the parentheses. So we're actually taking this and we're changing the input. But what we have to do is we have to go up to the top, not to the top, like just up a little, and we have to look at the formula. 
The formula is x minus h. So now when we go down here, we have x plus 3. So if the formula is f of x minus h, what was h? Might have been a little tricky. h was actually negative 3 because in order to turn it to a plus 3, it had to say x minus negative 3, which then turned it there. So now what's happening is each point, the input for each value is actually going down 3. So if I go to this point and I make the input value, which is the x value, go down 3, it actually shifts 3 to the left and lands right there. Now I go to the next point. And if I want to shift the input 3 to, three to the left, I go 1, 2, 3, and this is my new point. And then you can just pop all the other points on there. Mathematically, what happened to the graph is that it actually moved to the left 3. All right, our next type of transformation is a reflection. Hopefully you might already know what goes in the blanks. A reflection is a transformation that flips a graph over a line called the line of symmetry. And reflections and lines of symmetry you learned about back in elementary school. Now remember, when something is on the outside of the parentheses, it changes the output values. And when it's on the inside, it changes the input values. So what happens is when you change the output values, all your y values change. And when you do the input values, all your x values change. Let's see what that actually means. Just like in example one, I would like you to pause the video and I would like you to graph the f of x graph on both grids. And again, use the slope and intercept. For this one, the m is 1 half and the b is 1. Pause the video and do that now on both grids. All right, so what does it mean when you change the x or y values? So let's put our pen or pencil on this point right here. If the negative sign is outside the parentheses, then it's changing the y value or the output. So the output is the y value. So if the y value changes and it's a reflection, it goes from negative 1 up here to positive 1. So let's put a dot right here. For the next point, it's actually at 0, so it doesn't go anywhere. It just stays at 0. For this next point, it has a y value of 1, so for changing the y value, it goes to negative 1. And let's just finish this up. This has a y value of 2, so it's going to go down here to negative 2. This has a y value of 3. It's going to go down here to negative 3. So what happened with this graph, when we changed the y values, it actually reflected over the x-axis. Now you can probably figure out what's going to happen with this next graph. When I change the input values, it changes the x value. So if I look here, this point has an x value of 4, which, I'm sorry, negative 4, which means it's going to change to a positive 4. So this point is going to reflect right over here. So let's put a dot right here. This next point has an x value of negative 2. So when I change its input, it goes to positive 2. And let's just finish up the dots. So I changed my x values. This stayed 0. This went from positive 2 to negative 2. And this went from positive 4 to negative 4. So what do we say? It reflected over the y-axis. All right, there's one more type of transformation called a dilation. And a dilation, when we're talking about graphs, is a stretch or a shrink. So we can multiply values. That's what you do with dilations. Um, and we can either make the line steeper or flatter. And you can see in the pictures down below, from the parent function, this black line, it either got steeper or got a little flatter. So just like the other two examples, I'd like you to pause the video 
and I would like you to graph f of x equals x minus 1 on both grids. Again, it's conveniently in slope-intercept form. So the m is 1, because that's the number in front of the x, 1x, and the b is negative 1. So pause now and press play when you're ready, both grids. Example A is a little tricky because it freaks everyone out because of that F word, right? The F word you're not allowed to say, fractions. So what we're going to do is just look at the numbers that are friendly multiples of 3, like 3 and, and negative 3, 6, 9, right? Whatever fits on the grid. And in order to do this, I'm going to make a little chart underneath. So there's my chart, and I made this one a little gray because when you plot points, you only use the x value and the y value. Um, this is just like an intermediary step. So what the function wants us to do is to take our x values and multiply them by one-third. So our new input values are going to be negative 1, 0, and positive 1. Now what I do is I take those gray values and I plug them in the formula. So I take these values and I plug them right into that equation right there. So what's negative 1 minus 1? What's 0 minus 1? What's 1 minus 1? And you end up getting negative 2, negative 1, and 0. Now what I do is I plot these points as coordinates, and that grade section was just like an intermediary step. So I plot negative 3, negative 2, 0, negative 1 actually stays where it is, and 3, 0 right there. So I make the line, and what you notice is that this fraction made the line... Uh, much flatter. So we write f of x got flatter. The official math language is that it was a horizontal stretch, but visually you can say it got flatter, the slope got uh, smaller. You could also say that if you wanted to. This next one is a little less complicated because all we are doing is taking our y values and multiplying them by 3. So it's a little easier to understand visually. So let's look at this point, for example. It has an x value of negative 4. Now, if I multiply the output by, by 3, I would be at negative 12, which definitely doesn't fit. So let's go to a point that would fit. Um, let's see, this point will fit. So it has a negative 1 y value. So I'm going to take my output, f of x, and I'm going to multiply it by 3. So its new output is just going to be negative 1 times 3, which would be at negative 3. So that point's going to land right there. Okay, now let's look at the next point. This has a y value of 0, so it's going to just stay there because 0 times 3 is just 0. Now we look at this point, this point has a y value of 1, so it is going to shift to a y value of positive 3 right here. So we take our values and we just multiply them by 3. And then you can see that the line gets much steeper. Now what you say is f of x got steeper. You could also say that the slope got larger if you recognize that. Hopefully you do. The actual mathematical way of saying this would be that it's a vertical stretch, but that's fine. Whatever you want to say is okay. Now, there is more to this lesson, but I think you get the idea of the different things that you can do to a function. And if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.